this was my, uh, my paper. I want to give you a brief uh, overview uh, to the early medieval settlement of Bellendorf Gavenstal in the northeastern region of Austria, which reveals close contacts to the great Moravian uh, agglomerations uh, that Yeshi just presented. And uh, thus gives us an idea of the impact that these uh, centers had on the adjacent regions. The settlement is situated in the northeastern region uh, of Lower Austria, also called Weinviertel, and was excavated from 2003 to 2006 in the run up to the construction of the motorway A5 leading from Vienna to the southern border of the Czech Republic. <coughs> in the context of this rescue excavation, an area of 25 hectare was uncovered and revealed about 2,000 um, archaeological features spreading from the early Latin period to the late Middle Ages. For the early Middle Ages, more than 100 features can be identified or separated, dating from the 7th to the 8th to, 10th, uh, to the 9th to 10th century, with about uh, 35 pit houses numerous storage pits, a few ovens in the free area, and a deviant burial. The finding place is currently one of the largest early medieval settlements in Lower Austria. From the historical point of view, we know next to nothing about this region concerning the early Middle Ages, as written sources are almost missing completely. Today's uh, Lower Austria the region between the Enns River in the west and the Leite River in the east became part of the Carolingian realm at the turn of the year 800, but only the territories along the Danube River uh, were developed, as you can see here, um, uh, whereas peripheral regions were not reached. For the Weinviertel, it is supposed that it stood rather on the great Moravian influence that it was part of the Carolingian realm. From the archaeological point of view, the missing of a center in this city in this region and period is conspicuous. There are no evidences for a fortification or an agglomeration comparable to Pohansko or Mikocice in the east or the hill fort of Gastonau in the west which is uh, the best researched center of the 9th century in Lower Austria up to now. The three fortifications and hilltop settlements in central Weinviertel, uh, as shown in the map, uh, Michelberg, um, Oberleiserberg, and Michelstetten, are dating from the 10th century onwards and show no evidences uh, for intensive occupation phases during the 9th century. So if we hide this, uh, these three sites, the central region of, of the Weinviertel seems to be a center-free zone du during the 9th century, and this grounds the suspicion for an impact from outside, which, however, lacks any reflection in the written documents. Um, the early medieval period of the site can be separated in three main phases, each dating to the 7th, the 8th, and finally the 9th to 10th century. From the 7th century onwards, the ceramic finds show close contacts, contacts to the neighboring regions of southern Moravia and western Slovakia, so, the, so that the dating of the pottery of Bellendorf can be based on these chronological schemes due to the much better state of research in these regions. Um, giving you a short overview on the phases of the 7th and 8th century, here are two pit houses of the 7th century uh, with stone ovens in the, in the corner of the houses. Like they are very common and fa familiar for early medieval settl settlements in the Slavic world. These features contained early Slavic pottery of the 7th century. As you can see here, uh, it's handmade pottery, mostly non-decorated and only in some cases with with simply wavy scrolls. The occupation phase of the 8th century is also represented by several pit houses, now showing different constructions in terms of the number and the position of post holes, 
and guess and ga as you can see here again in most cases the, the dwellings were heated by stone ovens um, besides this there are, there are also evidences for plain fireplaces and one unique feature is here um, an oven digged into the earth wall of the house in addition there are numerous storage pits of course they were primarily created as storage for grain and later on used to discard waste uh, in several cases the backfills contained larger parts of animal skeletons like here you can see of deer and dog or they comprised millsto uh, millstones also a quite common feature in early medieval settlements the ceramic finds of this phase now can be connected to the pre-Great Moravian phase in Mikulcice and Bohansko and may date in general to the 8th century showing this characteristic shapes and types. In the most recent phase of the 9th and 10th century the outlined settlement patterns continue primarily showing various uh, numerous pit houses and uh, storage pits Besides this, uh, two houses come from this period which were destroyed by a fire and therefore parts of the wooden construction were preserved. Here the first example uh, with remains of the wood paneling of the wall. I hope you can see this. And of course several beams and posts and uh, the relics of a stone oven, in this case in the western corner of the house. The second example is the, the highlight of the site due to its good condition and conservation. Furthermore, in this case, the entrance can clearly be identified as it was conserved as a ramp on the western side of the, of the uh, house, again with uh, remains of the wood paneling and of course stone oven. Now in this phase, the ceramic finds corresp correspond with types which are well known from Mikulcice and Bohansko and have no analogies in other regions of Lower Austria. Typical are vessels with funnel formed rims and a groove on the top, like you can see here, examples from Bellendorf and on the right uh, some examples from Bohansko with these typical rim shapes. These uh, shapes are as associated with um, fabrics of high quality qu uh, containing a well sorted and dense s sand temper, perhaps you can see here, and showing a typical grain surface um, and in most cases a good or excellent ceramic firing. Here again on the left examples from Pellendorf and on the right here now some examples from Mikulcice. This group is better known as pottery of the Mikulcice circle and is characteristic for both Bohansko and Mikulcice. According to recent studies and analyses, it is seen as high great Moravian production of the second half of the 9th century and the beginning of the 10th century. Another pottery group, which is well known in Bohansko and Mikulcice and can be found in Bellendorf as well, is the so-called Blutschina type. Here are examples on the left from Pellendorf and on the, on the right from uh, various sites in Moravia. This type uh, typically shows an egg-shaped vessel, like you can see here, this particular rim shape, also here and here, and this uh, char characteristic decoration with uh, circumferential grooves on the shoulder and two wavy scrolls at the neck and uh, at the bottom. Another nice detail that shows the close contact between Bellendorf and Boha Bohansko are identical base marks on two vessels uh, from Bellendorf. On here on the left, they are, they are from two different pit houses. And here on the right, an almost identical base mark from a feature from Bohansko. Last but not least, there are also evidences uh, for pottery from the Stare Mesto region, which, which also Yeshi uh, mentioned. Now, this uh, agglomeration lies in a distance of about 90 kilometers from uh, Bellendorf. Here on the right, 
you can see an almost completely preser preserved pot uh, again from a pit house in Bellendorf. It is characterized by an extra extraordinary high quality of the fabric, uh, this specific rim shape and the decoration of three uh, grooves on the shoulder. And here on the right, almost uh, identical examples from Stare Mesto. Even though there are evidences for blue genotype and pottery from uh, Stare Mesto, the majority of the M Moravian pottery in Bellendorf can be linked to the Mikulcice circle, whose workshops are unknown up to now. However, the ex excellent quality of this pottery that has no similarities in the early medieval pottery shapes in Lower Austria in general, indicates the existence of high specialized workshops which were most likely established in the Great Moravian centers or within their hinterlands. So coming to a conclusion, I think the example of Pellendorf quite clearly indicates the great, uh, that the Great Moravian agglomerations had a strong influence into the West. Up to now, Bellendorf is the furthest to the west situated site in Austria, with ceramic of the Mikulcice circle as well as from Stara Mesto. Here again you can see the distance between Bellendorf and the great uh, Pohansko Mikulcice and here Stara Mesto. The lack of an ex agglomeration or center in the region during the 9th century as well as the evidence of products originated from Mikulcice, Bohansko and Stara Mesto make a vast political and economic area of influence, or rather hinterland, of these agglomerations visible. This result may also raise the question of how, how hinterland is defined. As uh, Peter Dressler, Dressler recently outlined, the hinterland of Bohansko and probably also of Mikulcice must be supposed as a large territory, whereas the Umland is the adjoining area of the centers. According to this, the settlement of Pellendorf and perhaps even larger ter territories of today's northeastern Austria can be assumed as part of the hinterland of these agglomerations as long they, as they existed. Concerning the material culture, these eastern influence rooted in the 7th century at latest and ended not until the midst of the 11th century at the time when finally the Babenberger's dominion reached this region. Thank you for attention. <laughs>